Okay guys, we're going to test it again with the audio. We changed some stuff over in Wirecast. There's a setting where you can actually boost the audio. And I think in the past we actually used that setting because you guys were complaining that the audio was too soft. And I think that there was one of the problems. We also changed mics over now. So my voice should be a little bit more from the left side if you're listening in stereo. But I think this sounds a lot better. Right, week is this okay? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So if you guys in the chat can let me know if the audio is now okay. I think we solved the problem which has been bugging us for weeks. And this is one of those hidden settings, you know, where you go into the menus and you go like, why the heck isn't it working? Everything on the headphones is okay. So what we did is we tested out Skype and that all sounded awesome. And then we started up Wirecast and everything went Wirecast again. In other words, it didn't work. Just a joke. Okay, so what was the problem? In Wirecast, there's an extra option to boost all volume by 200%. Now, this actually worked on our old system because the old system didn't have enough output. This system, however, has way more than enough output on the line levels. So in other words, I didn't need that setting and it was still there. So, yeah, that's why all the crackling probably came because it was literally over um, oversteering the, the sound. So clipping it. Okay, let me switch over the mic just a little bit up. So this is a beautiful ribbon mic for guys who know what a ribbon mic is. This is one of the best mics and it's a very cheap one also okay hey so today it's all about street and travel photography now of course we love to shoot models that's what i love to do but during covid we don't have a lot of time for that of course due to all the lockdowns and all the other restrictions but also when we didn't were in lockdown we loved street and travel photography of course we travel a lot and what do you do when you travel do you just sit in your hotel or Yes, you go out with your camera and you take some nice shots, hopefully some nice shots. So that's what we actually do. And over the years, I've become so much in love with street and travel photography. I thought it would be cool to do a special workshop for you guys about street and travel photography. So let's start still classroom with street and Okay, street and travel photography. Now, without a doubt, my favorite thing next to model photography. So let's start. I'm going to give you a slightly different view on street and travel photography. Now, as you know, one of the guys that I shoot a lot is actually a world famous piano player, Vivi Suyari. Now, as you can see here, I'm first going to tell you a little bit about my philosophy on photography. What is photography? What does it do for me? Now, when I look at an image like this, it doesn't really talk to me. It doesn't really tell me a story. It doesn't evolve into something where you go, wow, that's a great shot, right? It's just a little bit, a little bit bland. So maybe you can go a little bit closer to the stage, for example, and do stuff like this. Now, I have to be honest, I know him very well. So that means that I can literally just shoot during the whole concert and wherever I want. That's a luxury position, of course. But also a little bit closer up, it doesn't still doesn't really work for me. I still miss something. And at one point we started talking and it was going like, okay, also some mood in uh, some mood shots during the concert, right? So I saw this couple and the cool thing about this is it's for me a little bit of storytelling. It's a part of is he asleep because it's boring? Is he just hanging next to her lover because she actually loves the music? Or maybe she's dead. You don't know, right? And that's the, the, the very cool part about photography. You capture a unique moment in time that never comes back again. But you are also a storyteller. You can literally tell the story about what somebody does or how it's perceived what somebody does. Commercials are a great example for that, of course. So this is also the reason why I never name my images. I want people to think about what they experience when they see that image. Okay. But of course, closer is better, right? Lower angle shooting up, it all makes it a lot nicer. And at one point we started to talk like, hey, how can you make it even better? I already love your shots, but I want to make it even better. And then I said, you know what? The only way to get it better is to get me on stage with you. And he was going like, okay. And I was going like, oh no, what did I do? But in all, in all honesty, when you're on the stage with an artist, 
you can shoot from a totally different angle. Now, don't worry, this is about street and travel photography. Bear with me. But shooting from another angle doesn't really work. You have to make something that's unique, right? And this is just another angle. How about this, when he takes in the applause? He's, of course, a little bit smaller than me. Most people are. But when I stand up and I use a wide-angle lens and I actually tower above him and take that shot, you get that really nice atmosphere of the whole Concertgebouw, the artist taking in his applause and, of course, a little bit of the piano. So you are more and more getting into that storytelling. You have to find the elements that are interesting and you have to make a story about it. Okay, so let's translate that back to the street. Okay, this mic stand is a little bit winky. There we go. Let me see if I can fasten it just a little bit more. Okay, so let's translate this back to the street. What do you do on the street? How do you find those details? Well, for example, it can be very, very simple. But let me first start with a life motto. There are three choices in life, in my opinion. Give in, give up, or give it everything you've got. And I strongly believe that you guys should give it everything you got. Life is short, and you know now with the lockdowns, right? We only have a few months maybe to do what we love, and then you're inside again. So make sure that what you do, you do it with passion, and you do it full blast. Don't do anything half-baked, because in the end, well, we can only do stuff once or twice, right? So do it with everything you've got. Finding small details, that's for me street photography. And it can be something simple like this. I don't know why I shot it, but I was just walking around with the camera and I just thought like, hey, this really jumps out to me. The green in the city with all the junk and this little thing just jumps up. And also, do you see that everything around it is clean and everything else is dirty? That's something that really caught my eye and does that color, of course. So, yeah, I don't know why, but it just does. Same here, when we travel... I always look for stuff that's dirty, stuff that's decayed, or that's just weird, like here. And it's like, yeah, it's it's something that we don't see a lot. If you if you live in LA or New York, you probably see this every day, but for us it's like, wow. So it catches my eyes. And that's also something that's really important to understand. A lot of photographers travel to faraway countries to take images, while the photographers living in that faraway country actually travel all the way back to us for those great images. For the very simple reason, they see the world different from us. We all know how it looks, right? But for somebody else, that's new. And I think to get great street photography, you have to have a mix of both. You have to know what's going on, and you have to be amazed by, wow, this is cool, this is new. And what I always like to do is find some humor, like here, asshole, pick up after your dog or eat it. Sometimes I see those signs and I go like, this is just too funny. But I don't want to shoot only the scene or the, the, the sign. I want to make sure that I capture the scene. So where is it? What kind of person is this? So that's something to put it in perspective. I like to work with mirrors, as you can see here. But also the weird stuff again. I always look for weird stuff like, what the heck are those shoes doing in the middle of the street? Where's the owner? But also just shooting inside, for example, a barber shop. Now don't worry, later on we're going to go into detail into some shots and storytelling. Now I just want to show you something. Now when you see something like this, the first thing you go like, what the heck? What's going on here? Why is that cart over there? What's with the tires? But it's not as strong as it could be. And this is one part that I learned from Jay Mizell, actually. Find the stage and the players will come. In other words, it's, I believe it's from uh, Robert Desuneau, actually not from Jay myself, but it means don't hunt. And in the past, I was always hunting for my images. I was always looking. I was always going somewhere to shoot images. In essence, just find a location that's really cool and stay there and don't move. Because at one point, it will actually change to something like this. Now, this is a way more interesting image because... You see the cart with the tires, it's still there. You see that lady walking like, what the heck's going on? And you see the guy on the other side with the refrigerator. It's just waiting for something to happen. And in this case, one shot, I got the shot, I looked at the back of my camera, and yeah, let's go to the next scene. Because how many images do you want on a crossroad with a cart with tires, right? You get tired from it really fast. I also like to shoot people, just people standing somewhere watching. I don't know why it attracts me. It's just images that I want to show you. Like, okay, this is what catches my eyes. And maybe you also see something in the image where you go like, wow. I think I mostly shot this one for the reflections in the mirrors. And of course, the guy just standing there. Why? It's, I always want to know why. 
I like funny characters with the little dogs and yeah, I don't know. I just love this. Same here, using reflections, shooting through windows, it just gives it all a little bit more. Now, as a comic book fan, of course, when you see a Marvel shirt, <laughs> just kidding, that was pure coincidence. What I was actually aiming for is something that I will later on also explain in the seminar, is find the stage and the players will come. And in this case, like with the previous one, I like Crossroads. For the very simple reason, people on Crossroads are always busy. They want to get across the road, right? They want to listen to what they have on their headphones. Maybe they're talking over the phone with somebody, but they also have to make care that they don't get hit by a truck or whatever. So they don't pay attention to that loony guy with the camera on the other side of the road. So if you are a little bit reluctant to take images of people on the streets, like me, I always find it a little bit scary. This crossroad working is just plain awesome because, well, people are so busy they don't even notice you. And in all honesty, if you place yourself correctly, it's always a nice angle, as you can see here with the bikers. I just wanted to test something out there. I just loved it. Same here, fail. It's those little things, the things where you normally pass around and you go like, yeah, that's not funny. For us in the Netherlands, I don't see fail on a parking meter, so yeah, we just take a picture of it. I think it's funny. Also, different restaurants. This is a kind of restaurants we don't see a lot with us, so we take a picture, we put in some of the top, some in the bottom that's a little bit more out of focus, and of course the people in the kitchen. I like to make that combination of stuff. I'm going to go into detail in that later. This is just showing you some touristy stuff, but it all has a plan. Just go on. Some people sitting there. Now, this is one of those shots where I actually use a technique. Let me raise the mic again. I have to replace that mic stand. Okay, so I have this technique called the inverse selfie. Oh, where I literally use an inverse selfie technique. So, watch this. Now, you all know selfies, right? We all take selfies. And we want to send it to our mom or our friends or whatever. But if there's a scene where you have people that are semi-interesting, like in this case, I didn't really care for them, but I still wanted to take a picture. I don't know, my eye was, again, my eye was drawn to the scene and I was just going like, okay. But I didn't want to point my camera straight at those guys going like, hey, I'm taking your picture, but why? So you can do something called the inverse selfie where you literally just take out your phone if this was taken with a phone, I don't remember. And you do this. And you just take the picture. The thing is, a lot of people will immediately recognize this as a selfie. Hey, mom. But in reality, you're shooting. Now, I am one of those people that will never shoot somebody that doesn't want to be photographed. For the very simple reason. I think there's something called privacy, right? I would also never shoot somebody that looks weird or over the top without them knowing it. So... I have a very high ethical standard, but still that reverse selfie sometimes works. Because let's be honest, these guys don't look silly on the picture. It's just a moment in time captured by, hey, those guys were sitting on the bottom of the stairs. That's cool for us as a tourist. Again, these are the tourist shots. In a moment, we're going to show you the stuff that's more interesting, that had more thought behind it. Okay, Enric, audio is still okay? Yeah. Okay, still here, same crossroads. I just love the colors. Here are also the colors. Look at that girl waiting, that red dress. And this is also something that Jay Mycel tells of all his students during workshops. And I can repeat it, of course. It's if you go out and you try to find a girl in a red dress with blue shoes and a white dog, the chances are very, very limited, almost zero. But if you go out to find a girl in a red dress with a dog, those chances go up a lot. But what if you just go out and find strong colors? Or what if you go out and just go like, we'll see what happens. Everything is fine. And that's actually what I do. At first, again, I try to hunt everything. Nowadays, I'm way more relaxed. I'm just going to sit somewhere. I'm just going to wait for the moment. And if I see somebody like this with a red sweater, I will go like, oh, okay, let's wait for a yellow cap taxi cab. It's doesn't have to be perfect, but I just wanted the yellow taxi cab in the back. I positioned myself a little bit, red car, yellow taxi cab, wow, take the shot. Later on, maybe there was another yellow taxi cab, I didn't like the blue car, for example. I just took a few shots, and then she walked away, and I was going like, okay. But the contrast between those colors is something that really strikes me. And in all honesty, in New York, wait for a yellow cab, don't wait. Unless it's raining, of course, and you need one, then it's uh, not a problem. 
same here colors and different situations we don't know stuff like this and in all honesty if you buy something here it sh it looks like you will end up in the hospital but actually those places can get you the best food okay let me see we have somebody online that doesn't belong there i think yeah let's see Oh, and the week is taking over. Okay, cool. We don't want spammers here. Okay, same here. Red poison in New York. Uh, it's, again, something that I saw, something that just caught my eye. I took the picture, and I did try to do it a little bit different, of course, not just photograph the sign, but shoot it under a different angle. I liked it. It was a little bit curled up. I, w I wouldn't change that myself, but hey, if it's there, I'm going to shoot it. I will correct it a little bit if it's a little bit off, of course. Okay. Same here. Nice bike. These images, we'll just go through. I, the guy talking to the girl, look at his expression, look at his shoes, for example. It's just everything that catches my eyes. And again, I'm going through these images. These are just my personal images. Later on, we're going to do a little bit more techniques. Same here. Uh, I was in front of the store. I took a picture through the window like I normally do. I don't want to bother those guys with going in. Hey, I love those dolls. He actually came out himself and was going like, hey, do you like the dolls? I said, yeah, they're funny. Okay, let me take a picture. And he took out the dolls and he was posing for me. Now, that's the best thing that can happen during street and travel photography. People that are offering themselves as a model. That's awesome. I love that dude. And the dolls. They're all funny. Sometimes black and white works best. This reminded me of Superman. Clark. Clark Kent. Don't you agree? Look at that hat. Look at those glasses. Just before he turns into Superman. He's already holding the doorknob. He's going to turn around and he's going to be Superman. Maybe you see something completely different. But Superman is going to deliver that Ridgeway dinner for me. And that's the cool thing about photography. You can make your own stories. How silly they are. Same here. Color. And of course, again, something that we don't see a lot in the Netherlands. And here, reflections. Also something that I love to do. Low angles, wide angle lenses. Again, we're going to discuss everything later on. These are the more simple shots. So we're going to go through it a little bit faster. Again, the text on the van, the man with a van. And the color red. Red, I just love the color red. Now, you might wonder like, hey, Frank, all those shots, how do you do that? Well, I always have a camera with me. The biggest problem is shooting street and travel photography without having your camera with you. You always have to make sure that that camera is on your side so you can pick it up immediately and shoot. Even leave it on. I don't care. If the battery runs down, get new batteries. But you have to be ready to shoot on an instant. This fan was maybe in the picture for maybe two or three seconds. I saw it. I took the camera up. I took the shot and then it was already almost gone. So it's not a perfect shot. But at least I got the shot. And these are the first images I'm going to show you. Just the shots where I went like, hey, at least I got the shot. People on the street. In this case, somebody that we actually know. So it's a little bit fakery. I love the pizza box here. And again, she looks towards that um, yellow cap. It's all that, the combination of those images. It's not spectacular, but it gives me a nice image of that city. This is more what I love to do. Getting people in front of the camera that have weird clothing or cool colors or extremely weird hairdos or extremely fashionable or everything that's on the edge that's what i love to photograph i won't go to somebody that looks like me and go like hey guy gonna take your picture why what's interesting there's nothing interesting about me but i do go to somebody like this hey can i take your picture and she will know why right she doesn't stand in front of the mirror every morning and go like how can i be so boring as possible no she steps in front of the window and go a mirror and goes like, how can it be as interesting as possible for the street? Well, I'm a photographer. I love to shoot that kind of stuff. And of course, most of the time they will say yes. If you ask, can I shoot you with my camera? Okay. Same here. Just something that caught my eyes. I love the reflection. Of course, the burka, um, everything. It just gives me a feel of the city of New York. It's a city that we don't go to often. We maybe go there once a year. It, it looks totally different from anything we have here, like Amsterdam. If I show these pictures to somebody who never visited New York, they will love the images. However, if I show these images to somebody that did visit New York, they will probably go like, yeah, we know. That's why we show these first. Later on, we're going to up the ante again. Same here. Just some things that really catch my eyes during a walk. A reflection, a lot of dogs, 
let's go a little bit faster to these. Again, all the bottles there. I think this was after I saw that um, the one dollar store uh, photo actually uh, gave up a revenue of over one million dollar. I thought I can do that too. The highest bid on this moment at this image was 10 cents. So maybe if you guys want to up the ante a little bit, we accept bitcoins, Ethereum, doesn't matter. But for one million dollars, maybe we'll give you a little bit of a discount on this one. Now, all kidding aside, it did trigger something in me because if you can shoot something and sell it for a million dollars, it has to be interesting, right? But the thing is about that one dollar store image is actually that it is interesting because it's I don't know if you know the image, I can't show you, of course, for copyright issues, but it's all these bottles on a, on a, on a, on a shelf. It's nothing special, but it's all those combination of colors, all that, that chaos that just works for that image. So I thought like, hey, let's try something myself with a lot of reflections and whatnot more. And the end result is a lot less interesting, of course, but still for me, I really like that image. Okay, same here, Crossroads, you see that a lot, right? This is a funny story, by the way. I shot him because of his glasses. I really liked his glasses. And I didn't know who the guy was. He only passed me and said, hey. And I was like, okay. And then he came back and he's actually one of the employees from B&H in New York. And he just asked me like, why did you shoot me? I said, man, I just love that you walked with your bike over and I love the glasses with the reflection. And he's also a photographer. This is the cool thing. When you shoot on the street, you also meet people on the street that are also maybe interested in photography or maybe interested in your work. You never know what's going to happen after that. And here also, I love colors, as you can see. Colors and crossroads. Constantly, that will come back. I love here that the New York Police Department is looking at somebody with a skateboard, something that in Amsterdam or over here is highly illegal. We can't use skateboards on the open roads. Come on. So, yeah, seeing this is for us just funny. But again, that's our story. Now, how can you photograph New York best? This is one option. Uh, somebody on slippers. Now, when we visit New York, we walk about 20 kilometers a day. So we do a lot of walking. And I couldn't imagine doing it on slippers. But as you can see here, the image is a little bit watered down by all the other information. You have the yellow cap, you have the New York Police Department, you have the crossroads, you have the lady, you have the bags, you have the slippers. It's all a lot to take in. And sometimes you need it, but sometimes it's better to crop. And this just tells a way different story. First, it makes the subject, of course, fully anonymous. Unless, of course, you recognize your feet, which I don't hope for you guys. But on the other hand, it also makes the image so much more powerful because you are focusing on only one thing. There's nothing to take your attention off anything else. Again, depth of field, color contrast. Love it. And it's not that interesting again, but it's just interesting. Again, reflections, colors. Well, do I have to say more? Colors. And I don't know why I shot this. It's I think more to show the boardwalk. And of course, sometimes you need a model if you don't have a model and we just let Enui do something funny. Oh, let me do that again. There we go. Can't zoom in, sorry. Okay, same here. It's all just stuff that we see that we normally don't see. All touristy stuff. And sometimes something funny. Okay, let's go a little bit faster until we get to the really cool stuff. So this is what most people will come by when they go on a holiday and they will just show you some images and they're not bad, they're not great, but they show the way that the city is. So what if we throw in a little bit of storytelling? What if we throw in just a little bit more adventure, a little bit more oomph? Find people. I always call this the special ones. Don't know why, but when I'm with my camera, I always try to find people where I can interconnect with. Something like a story, something like what triggers you? Why do you do this? What is your life story? How does it happen that you are one of the richest guys in the world? How come that you are one of the poorest guys in the world? How the heck did you start selling a zombie survival store? Yes, we met them. So the special ones. These are the guys where we literally try to find out what they do and sometimes we don't. Like in this case, it all went way too fast. I was on top of a bus, uh, like a city tour. I saw this guy in front of a watch. He just pulled up, open his um, coat and he just went like, hallelujah, in the middle of the street. And I was just going like, point my camera, shoot it. And just, I hoped that it worked. And I still love this shot. 
special ones. This is the owner, believe it or not, of a ghost town, a little ghost town in America. And every time somebody pointed the camera towards him, he would shy away. He would go like, no, no, I don't want to see. No, no, no. And I was just going like, hmm, okay. Why doesn't he want to be photographed, right? Why doesn't he want this? And at one point, I just started to talk with him, going like, hey, um, so I really like uh, the ghost town. How do you find your life goal in owning a ghost town? And he was just going like, oh, man, I really like this. And it was handed over for um, that family. And then we bought it. And this whole story. And in between, two other guys were taking his photograph. And he was just going like, no, I don't want any photos taken. Now, of course, I also had my camera with me. And I wanted to take a picture of him behind the desk just for my own keepsake. And you know the, the movies or the TV series Columbo? You remember when Peter Falk always walked away and then turned around and go, oh, one more thing. I did exactly the same thing. I was just dying to shoot him. I just wanted that picture. It's not special, but still I wanted that picture. So I turned around, walked away, and I said, oh, one more thing. I turned around, and I saw him looking, and I was going like, can I buy a bottle of Coke? And he was going like, yeah, sure. And that was $1. So I gave him $1, walked away, turned around, and I said, okay, Pete, I don't remember his name. I said, I know you hate pictures. Oh, no, not for you, my friend. And he posed. And I was going like, this is exactly what I mean. This is what I tell you guys in every single seminar. Connect. Connect with your subject. Because if you show interest in their life, they will show interest in yours. And taking a picture, dude, you way easier take a picture from somebody that you know as from a total stranger. So in this case, I'm his friend. I'm somebody he knows. So why not take his picture, right? And it worked like a charm. These are the owners of the largest thermometer in the world in Death Valley. Now, this is one of those places that we visited almost every year. So when we do Photoshop World, we often do Photoshop World in Orlando, and then we do it in Las Vegas, or we do it somewhere else. But anyway, Las Vegas is one of the points where we almost every year go. And we always try to fly into San Francisco to meet friends, or to Los Angeles also to meet friends, of course. So we always try to drive Route 66 to Las Vegas. That's an awesome piece of, well, touristy stuff, but I just love it. And one of the cities that we always went through was with the world's largest thermometer, but there was nobody there. And at one point, I just said to Enrique, you know, I want somebody underneath, uh, an employee or whatever, but I want to have more information. So I just went in, and I still have in my mind, my dream one day is to go with an RV over area, uh, oh, sorry, Route 66, and take pictures of interesting people and tell their story with pictures. Like nobody done before, right? Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, so I was there, and I just said, like, hey, I took some shots outside of the thermometer. Is there anybody here that can me tell, tell me more about it? And luckily enough, these are the owners. So they were just telling me this whole story, showing me everything about the thermometer. And then I just asked them, like, would you mind to stand in front of it? No. Again, connect with people. Now, for you guys, this isn't a really interesting image. For me, it was more testing a concept out. Can I really just go somewhere without any introduction, talk to people, become friendly with people, and be able to shoot on locations or even with those people that are normally not allowed? And guys, I can tell you, it's really easy. All those problems I hear during seminars, like I don't have the guts to ask, I don't have the guts to do this, they will probably say no. In my experience, they almost always say yes, because you are interested in their lives. And that means that you care for them, right? So they will also show interest in you. This was something else. We saw this in, um, I don't remember where it was, but somewhere in uh, California on the beach and i was just going like what is this man Congo for president now after this they elected another president and i'm not going to say what i think about the, him but maybe this one was better i don't know so what was the story behind this one so i saw all this stuff and the revolution party and there's a lot of stuff on the side of the van that actually shows congo as president and you might wonder who the heck is congo because i never heard of him well this is actually the representative of congo 
believe it or not, this is a true story. And I've told this many times during seminars, and actually a few people in America actually told me, he's right, we know this guy. So this guy, and I don't remember the story exactly, but I should have recorded it. This guy came out while I was shooting his truck, and he was just going like, what do you do? I said, well, dude, you have an amazing truck. I love to shoot it. I'm never going like, oh, sorry, man. I'm just going like, dude, I love this truck. It's amazing. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? And he said, well, a few years ago, I was sitting in my bed. I woke up by an enormous noise outside in the garden. So I went outside in the garden and I saw a UFO landed and there was a big beast coming out of it. And he wanted to bite me. But before he slit my trough. He told me, if you make me president of the United States, I will bring peace to this world because I come from a peace world and I will make you rich beyond riches. Yeah, we all see how that ended, right? In a truck, probably out of his mind, traveling through America to get Congo on the list. But he still isn't bitten, so maybe there's a little bit of a truth behind the story. You never know. Anyway, I'm more in the camp of, yeah, sure. <laughs> what is he smoking? But here you see all the precedents and, of course, Congo. Yeah, no. It had me smiling for a week. I really like it. Okay, the others. Now, this is a part that's a little bit more difficult for me because this is the part where I'm in out with myself. I always tell people shooting homeless people is not something you do. It's already, they have so much trouble. Don't see it as an opportunity to shoot. On the other hand, Sometimes there are also situations where it's actually pretty interesting to shoot those people, not to shoot them as, hey, look at this, this is funny, more to shoot them like, hey, are you aware that there are a lot of people in this world that have it a lot less than you, that really struggle? And I also try to do it a little bit more with contrast, like, for example, this shot. Now, at first image, you might say, yeah, so what? But now look a little bit closer. We have a guy with a cart selecting little bottles, right? And cans. He probably gets five or 10 cents for a can. Next to him is a big stretched limo. They don't care about cans, they throw it out. And in front is the United Port Postal Service. You can't think of this, you can't put it in a scene. It just happened. And you might think like, hey Frank, that's far talk. Yes, maybe. But for me, it worked. And that's the thing about photography. For me, it works, maybe for somebody else too. And I think with this image, you have to look longer at the image to see the story. And that's my mistake. But is it really a mistake? Or is it more something that will trigger people to look at the image? You be the judge. If it's a mistake, just go to the next image. If it's not, it works. And that's the cool thing. Everybody will see this differently. The real naked cowboy. It's not somebody I know that's next to him, but I just love this shot. Look at all those billboards on the side. Look at him posing with the girls. You don't want to shoot something like this straight from the front because then you have the naked cowboy with two girls. That doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't give you a sense of being there. It gives you the sense of, hey, you probably know those two girls, right? I don't know. Then why did? Then it becomes weird. You know what I mean? If I would shoot it straight on and people would ask me, do you know those two girls? No. Do you know the naked cowboy? No. Now, why the heck did you take that shot? But now, because I shoot it from a side, I'm actually giving you an insight in how a scene works. All the billboards in the back, the lights from Times Square, the naked cowboy, people posing for him. It just gives a different story. And this one, I don't know. It's just so funny. The, 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 the chair, the boots, the head, like an elephant. I think somebody makes his mother really proud, right? For fashion. But... Yeah, I, I just couldn't resist. This kind of stuff, I just have to shoot. This one I also liked, but I did want to shoot it differently. I did want to shoot it more under an angle where you only see his feet coming out. And I like the contrast between that, the rapper with all the tattoo, uh, tattoos with the big bling, and then the only shelter that somebody else has is behind the charade of that rapper. I just thought it was f not funny, but strong. And... I wanted to change that angle, but because I had to move a little bit, I, I always take the shot first and then I try to change the angle. And I'm lucky I did because as soon as I just walked a little bit to the left, somebody else came up and he was actually um, s telling the guy to move along and he went. And I was just going like, oh crap, just waited for five more seconds and I had this perfect shot. Do I really make 
him look weird. No, because his face is not on there. Do I make use of the situation for my own pleasure? No, because I'm literally sending a message with something like this. Is it okay to do? I think in that case, yes. Would it be okay to just shoot somebody's misery? No, no way, never. I would never do that. Now, this was shot actually in a very, um, very wealthy city. You don't expect people in Scandinavia to go through the trash cans, but still they do. So that was for me more the shock event from, oh my God, what's going on here? We are living in a, or we are visiting a very, very rich city and you still have people going through the garbage. But even here, when you compare it to somebody in uh, Los Angeles, they look very well maintained. They have nicer bags, <laughs> nicer dress. It's... It's just a weird combination for me. So I took the shot, but I think not intentionally, but more to compensate it with this one. This one was shot in Los Angeles and I didn't want to do it, but I was talking about somebody who drove us around like, hey, I want to see something that's really Los Angeles, but that's more gritty, like for example, uh, Skid Row. And he said, nah, Skid Row is not really something where you want to go. We go to Tent City. And in all honesty, I took this shot and I took a few other ones uh, by drive-by shooting. So in other words, we were in the car and just shooting through the windows. And somehow at one point I just laid my camera down. It was too intense. All those homeless people literally almost dying on the floors. It just overwhelmed me. And I, I'm a bad photographer in that case. I just couldn't shoot it. It became too direct into my face even with the camera in front of me it was just too horrible and i asked her in a week she was sitting next to me and she had exactly the same feeling it was like your stomach was just turned around in your in your belly not a good feeling so i didn't shoot it anymore but this is such a contrast compared to the other shot that i just needed to get those two next to each other same here it's just so intense what those people are going through and i think by showing it this way by holding that apple and the starbucks logo it's it's perfectly aligned i just couldn't resist shooting it but it's also showing so much how much poverty there is in this world and so maybe the next time you throw away your starbucks think about what you're throwing away and maybe next time don't buy a starbucks but give it to somebody who really needs it not money of course but the starbucks itself just an idea okay now same here this might look like somebody who was killed, right? Who was shot. Well, not really. <laughs> this was also shot in LA and through the window of a car. And the main problem with this was I saw this guy totally, probably wasted out of his mind, totally drunk, laying on the floor. And trust me, he has nice shoes. He has nice <laughs> clothing. He's not homeless, but he probably was just way too drunk. I took the shot and it was literally not usable. It was way out of focus. It was noisy as heck because it was on a very high ISO. It was darker outside. It just looked terrible. This is where my joke started. Make something black and white, add a lot of contrast and noise, and you have instant art. In this case, actually, it changed the whole freaking story. Instead of shooting somebody in color that's literally drunk and laying on the floor, it now looks like somebody was shot dead on the floor. I have to be honest, when I saw the color image, I was just going like, yeah, okay, cool. And I was just going through the filters, making it black and white. And at one point I was just going like, wow, it looks like a gang hit or something. And I just made it black and white and just started showing it like that way. So tinting an image can totally change the, uh, how do you call it? In Dutch we call it lading, uh, the message. It will totally change the message of an image. So as a photographer, you are very powerful in choosing your tinting. can be color. For example, blue will give you a little bit of a chills. It's outside, it's darker, it's moody. While yellow will give you more warmth. It's sunset or sunrise. It's nice and warm and relaxed. While red, that's danger, right? Green is safe. So when you go for black and white, you are already making something a little bit more grungy than stage it like, uh, not stage it, but photograph a scene like this. And it almost looks totally different. So it gives you a different um, attitude. Very nice to do, I think. Okay, this was part of the tent city that I wanted to show you. This is actually, I think, the last part where we shot. After this, I was done with it. So, for to be honest, don't shoot homeless people just for fun. 
because it's not fun. It's literally something that's terrible. On the other end, if you shoot it like I do here to just tell a story, I think that's different because this is more awareness. Like, hey guys, we are doing great, but there are a lot of people that don't have good lives. Maybe think about them. Okay. And sometimes it's just plain funny. Like when I look at this image, I see a woman, I see a man in a wheelchair, and I think that the man is pregnant. I don't know, it's just every time I see the image, it just immediately boils up in my head like, hey, this is weird. So this, that guy looks pregnant. But hey, maybe I'm totally wrong. It's just something that I see in the image that I find funny. So I took the shot. Okay, through the window. Now, one of the things that a lot of people will tell you during your photo travels is that will never work. I've been told so many times, when I start shooting with shadows, oh man, that will never work. Nobody likes shadows. Oh, okay. When I started shooting, for example, uh, classical artists in more like a rock style, people start, nah, that will never work. It did work. It actually ended up on the cover of a CD uh, release. It's all in the mind's eye. If somebody didn't do it, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. If somebody did it and it didn't work, it doesn't mean that you can't pull it off. Now, one of the things that I found interesting and frustrating is that I saw all this beautiful stuff while sitting in a car. So going from the, um, um, how do you call that? The event space to our hotel, from the hotel to the airport, all those trips, I saw amazing stuff in Dubai, in uh, literally everywhere. So why not take some shots? And then I started to think, well, if you can take shots through the window, you can, of course, move way faster because now I don't have to stop, get out, take the shot. I will get lesser shots, but I probably get more shots. So I started asking my drivers always to, okay, please clean the window for me. And they cleaned the window and look at this. You get some truly amazing shots through the window because the window also acts a little bit like a filter. So you never know what you're going to get. It's going to be a little bit funky sometimes. Sometimes it's razor sharp. Sometimes you get some lens flare. Sometimes there's a little bit dirt on the window. It can really, really help out. And you get unique viewpoints. This was shot with my phone, by the way. Oh, sorry. I have to go back. Sorry. This was shot with my phone. And trust me, most... Most of the times I'm not driving myself, but Enoik is driving or Enoik is holding the steering wheel. I'm not going to tell you guys that. Just do it safe and not like me. But it's unique points of view. You never get those points of view from just walking around. So, guys, if they tell you you can't shoot through the window of a car, here you have to pro you have to prove you can do it. And this was the most frustrating part. This is Chinatown, and I always love to visit Chinatown when we're in Las Vegas. Oh, sorry, when we're in uh, San Francisco or New York. I always love Chinatown. And normally, I can park really easily in Chinatown. Don't ask me why. It always worked. And this time we only had about, I think, two hours before we had to leave to the airport. And I said, I, we didn't visit Chinatown yet. I want to go to Chinatown. I want to take some pictures. And this was the only time, the only time ever we couldn't find a parking spot n anywhere. N I don't know why. We just couldn't find a parking spot. So shooting through the window. That was the only solution in this case. So sometimes it's because you want to do more in little time sometimes it's just very simple because you can't find a parking spot and be honest be honest guys how many times did you stop shooting photos because you couldn't find a parking spot shoot through the window at least you have something and sometimes it really works and gives you a totally different perspective and like this kid i could never shot this if i was standing in front of him but because we were driving by by the car and i shot a click and i got it so don't let something hold you back now, if you know me, you know that one of my life mottos is without any doubt, if you don't laugh, you don't laugh. So I want to make sure that people have fun, right? It's, you only live once, but at least as far as we know. So humor in images. This is the part that is, I think, incredibly important and maybe the most fun part, humor, of this whole seminar. Finding stuff that's interesting. Okay. Okay, we still have a good connection. That's good. Sometimes I see an error that freaks me out. Okay, so for example, if you see somebody like this, yes, holding this site is unbelievably be boring. Be honest. You have to shoot something like that, right? Or what about this? A Mexican standoff in Times Square. And trust me, this was not set up. This is the 
thing when you always have your camera ready. This is the thing when you almost bump inside or, or bump against things because you always have that freaking camera in front of your face. This is the part where it really pays off. I saw this guy with his orange iPad taking a picture of Times Square and I was just going like, that's interesting. I took two steps back and I saw these two guys also taking a picture. I don't think they're related or whatever because they didn't leave together. And I was just going like, this is so funny. So I was just standing two steps back, aimed my camera very quickly and took the shot. It was literally in seconds. They put down their stuff and they walked away. They didn't look at me, they didn't say anything, they just walked away. For me, this image says everything. Fast reaction. Of course, you have to make sure that you can trust your camera. On the other hand, if focus was on the guy with the orange iPad, I would have told you that that was planned. In all honesty, the focus should be on the two other ones. But hey, if it failed, I would tell you the other way around. But in this case, it didn't. So, right time, right moment. And a little bit of fun. Same here. In the supermarket, I just saw this and I was going like, this is too funny. I just, I have to shoot this. And in a supermarket, it's always a little bit weird because people look at you like, hey, why are you shooting inside our establishment? I go, establishment, it's a supermarket, dude, but okay. They asked me like, hey, why are you shooting that? And I just turned around to camera. I said, don't you think this is funny as heck? And she looked at me and she just started laughing. She said, you know that bag is with an E? I said, you know that I'm Dutch, I don't care. And she said, yeah, but I, I still think it's funny. So of course I know that bag is with an E. That's also part of the fun, I think. I beg for life. Now, in all honesty, it didn't say I beg for life. It happened that two of those bags just were like this. I couldn't have thought of it myself. And I was just going like, this is so funny. And I just took the shot. And again, be there at the moment and react. If somebody would pull the bag off, I wouldn't probably arrange the other ones. I would just go like, yeah, that's a missed opportunity. Okay. Sometimes science can be really confusing. Like, how do you want an English, uh, an English what? An English, now I know that the English people don't really have a great breakfast, but to call it a whatever fast, no, that goes way too fast. A cheeseburger is okay, sandwich is okay, I think. And the pizza margarita is okay, but uh, the English breakfast, no. But again, maybe you don't find it funny. Let's see if you find something else funny. For example, bloody hell good offers on. I think it's bloody hell interesting, right? Or what about this one? I wonder if it was planned by higher powers. Bacon is our god. Godless? So are we. It's, it's all that stuff that you don't think about. It's just you drive by, you see it and you go like, that's funny. So have that camera ready. This was also shot through the window of a car. I would have loved to stop here, by the way, to take that shot. Okay, it's great to be terrible. You know it. Yep, we know it. Now, remember this, terrible, right? Just keep it in the, keep it in the back of your mind. Just close it up there for a few seconds. Terrible, right? Remember this shot, terrible. Okay, there we go. Also funny, guy on a skateboard with a dog, why not? Now, what does this mean? I didn't know. So I asked my guide and he actually said, this sign means that if you jump off here with a skateboard, you will break your arms or worse. I still can't see it in it, but hey, he tells me, I believe him. But I just thought it was weird to see something like that on the floor. Now this one, this will take you a little bit of uh, figuring out. So I'm going to let you just take this in. Just look at this shot. Take it in. I'm going to take a sip of drink. You know what? I'm going to show you a trailer. And when I'm back in the chat, I want you guys to tell me what's not right about this shot. So in the chat on YouTube, tell me what's not right about this shot. And in between, let me show you a trailer, something we did on location and video out of it. Let me start that one over.
New York, without a doubt one of the most beautiful places in the world for street photography. In this video, Beyond Snaps New York, we're not only going to show you tips and tricks about gear, getting great shots, uh, locations, how to talk to people and much much more, but we're also going to show you some places that you may or may not have heard of, of New York. How about two Chinatowns? You probably know one, we actually found another one that's way more interesting. How about a location where you can get great, great night shots? Or Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash, Amityville. This video is jam-packed with not only photography tips and techniques, but also great locations to visit when you go to the New York area. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this video. In my opinion, it's one of the best we ever made. So enjoy Beyond Snaps to New York. And we are back. So I wonder if you guys know what's going on with this. I don't see anything in the chat, but of course it's during daytime. So probably you guys are sleeping or working. So what is wrong with this? Well, it's very easy. Let me first to be there we go. So what's going on here? Well, for this, I actually have to show you the next image, I think. And probably now you see it. So the front one is the old one. And that's the one how it's supposed to be. Namely, if you have a boat and you connect a boat to that thing, I don't know the English term for it, it's of course the idea that the boat doesn't float away, right? That's the whole idea, the boat doesn't float away. So let's go back to that other one. How will it work over there? If you throw the, the ropes over it, the boat will just float away for the very simple reason. It's the wrong way around, guys. I hope you saw that, and if you didn't see it, I hope you're laughing now. It's the wrong way around. This will never, ever work. So why the heck did they do it? Is it Photoshop? No. My guide brought me here because I told him I wanted to see something that's unique. He said, oh, I do have something for you. And it didn't tell me what it was until we were there. And I was just going like, dude, are you serious? He said, yeah, they spent about 100,000 euros on this whole project, and everywhere they are the wrong way around. So they have to do it all over. That's something that's funny, but that does need a little bit of explanation. So when I show you an image like this, a lot of people won't get it. They will go like, yeah, cool. And that's because it's something that has to be pointed out to the viewer. It has to be pointed out. Now, of course, you can make a subtext with it like, hey, this is the other way around. It's blah, 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 blah. It even made the newspapers. It's a big scandal, whatever. But people who see the image doesn't read the byline, or if the image gets shared online, they don't read it. So what's better than to just do this? Give it concept. Show the front the way that it's supposed to be. Show very clearly the other ones that are the other way around, and show the boat. This way, it makes it way stronger, and it tells the story, and it's just way more funny that way. Okay, so I think the audio is now okay. Every, nobody is complaining, so that will be fine. Okay, this one, New York, oh, sorry, uh, Los Angeles during Halloween. I just thought it was way more funnier than anything else I saw. Look closely. The thieves are outside having dinner. The police is inside. <laughs> sorry. It's just, for me, that's fun. Okay, and this one. Now, imagine that you've been walking through the desert for about two and a half hours. It's dry as can be. And then, when you think about getting nice... For a swim, you find a sign like this in the middle of the desert, no swimming, and you just go like, why? Now, of course, I know that during winter time, probably there's water there. We live in the polder, as we call it, the new land. So we also have areas that will flood during certain periods of time. But still, it's funny to see this in the middle of a desert where it's like 50 degrees in Celsius outside, and we just walk for two hours. There's nothing there. And then in the middle of the desert, there's this sign, no swimming, and you go like, Serious? No swimming? Why not? I just felt for swimming here. It's just bizarre. Okay, now how about this one? Do you know that problem when you have your seat reserved on the beach and you come back and there's somebody on your seat and he doesn't want to give it away and he looks this big, like me, and you go like, yeah, you can keep the seat. Well, these two guys will keep your seat safe. Don't mess with them. They're pure mafia. Now, I'm just kidding. This was shot on a beach, of course, duh. And those two seagulls 
they were sitting in front of those beat chairs and i was just going like this is just way too funny so i just took the shot and two seconds later they flew away but having them in front of two beat sets at approximately the same distance without photoshop this is a real i can show you the roll file if you don't trust me but this is a real shot I just, the only thing I have to do for a seminar is just imagine the story with it or let you guys imagine the story. It's all about that scene, which I think is pretty funny. Okay, this was shot last week. If nothing goes right, go left. And somehow it just triggered for me. I was just going like this whole uh, COVID thing is of course terrible. It's, we are going into an area where we probably have a lot more problems with COVID because nobody's wearing masks and everybody's doing what they want to do. They just act like there's nothing going on. And I saw this sign, if nothing goes right, go left. And I was just going like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing now. If all the people go that way, I will go that way. I will just keep myself a little bit more distance. So, of course, it's also a different saying. If nothing goes right, go left. In other words, if you try everything in, for example, playing music and you can't play any music, try to do something in mathematics. Totally the opposite. If you are very, very successful in photography, great. Don't try mathematics. Or maybe you do. So I think it's a great motto. If something doesn't go right, go left. Try to total opposite. So yes, with photography, the same thing, by the way. If I feel that I'm totally burned out with using strobes, flash, I will start using natural light or I will start using a ring flash. I will literally go left instead of right. Right? So, yeah, funny. This one, the burgers and dogs. Now, of course, it's a burger joint that also sells hot dogs. But the first time I saw it, I was just going up and I was going like, what? Burgers and dogs. And then I looked a little bit further. And of course, again, we are in the Netherlands. We don't have a lot of burger joints or it's like uh, McDonald's or uh, high-end restaurants, of course, that do sell burgers. So I'm not used to seeing something like burgers and then also and dogs. I was like, this is just funny. Again, it doesn't work if you're from America. You just go, you're like, yeah, we see those signs every day. But for example, if you're from the Netherlands or if you're from, I don't know, somewhere where we just have a lot of those chains, it looks a little bit different. So, so where it's translated universally. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's it dependent on where you live. So always wait where when you post something online and you think it's funny and people don't respond, maybe it's because in their countries it isn't funny. It's, it's normal. Yeah, we see that all the time. Like, for example, this one, which was shot in Dubai. And I just love the fact that all those boxes have a new house and you see somebody sleeping on top of it. And you just go like, this is so funny. It's like they built those blocks, a house, they started sleeping on it. But what if he falls down? He's immediately in his bathroom, right? because the water is right next to it. So that's how my mind works. And then I take the picture and I'm just playing it. <laughs> that's funny. So then it ends up in a seminar. And luckily, when I show this to most people, you get a lot of laughs. This is a little bit more difficult because I can't see you guys, but I guess you guys have fun. McDonald's. Now, Frank, why the hell do you photograph McDonald's? I didn't shoot McDonald's. Just look a little bit further. Just let your eyes follow the leading line. And I don't mean the yellow arches. Follow the leading things and just tell me what you read. When you read from left to right, you literally read McDonald's, terrible. Remember terrible? Yes, it's a chain. So when you go to the other side, it also works. Terrible McDonald's. Now imagine being... I, I, I only can imagine how you came up with the name Terribles. Or your name is Terrible, which I find highly unreal, uh, or you are stoned out of your mind in your parents' attic, and you just go with your friend, who is also stoned out of his mind, and you go like, hey, dude, you know what would be funny? If we would name a company Terribles, like the worst thing in the world, and everybody would buy stuff from us, but the worst thing is, the best thing, we could place it next to other stores and we're better because we tell the other store is terrible. I don't know, maybe they don't know of something like that or whatever, but I just, every time I see a Terribles and there's something next to it, I just have to shoot it. In this case, McDonald's. And for me, I don't know if it's for you guys, maybe it's just that uh, my, my uh, fun bone is triggered a little bit easy, but I just find this hilarious. Okay, know your locations. One of the most important things, don't just go out and shoot, Go out and find something to shoot. Find the stage and the players will come. But you have to find the stage. Find 
first. Now, in New York, that's easy. You just go outside and there's always a stage. In Emirates, it's a little bit more difficult. But if you call me, I can tell you where the stage is, where probably there won't be any pictures, but at least something else that you can think of. So find a local photographer. For example, we never knew about this restaurant. And I don't show the restaurant yet. During Photoshop World, I heard about a restaurant where they actually have ambulances in front of the restaurant. If you are over 500 LB, that's about 255 kilograms, I believe, you go in, you have to stand on a scale. And if you are above 500 LB, you eat for free. But now comes the kicker. Every time you want more free food, you have to stand on the scale again. Now, that has to be pure American. Sorry, I don't want to offend any Americans, but that has to be American. But because if you are 500 LBS before you start your dinner, how the heck can you be less than 500 LBS after you finish your dinner? So every time you order a Coke and you're over 500 LBS, you have to stand on the scale. Yes, you're over 500 LBS, you get a free Coke. Oh, I like a burger. Stand on the scale. Yes, you're over 500. Yeah, but I just... Now, of course, I'm not over 500 LBS, but I saw it happening there. Now, the most funny thing about this restaurant is I didn't know where it was. So we asked our friends and they said, OK, it's there. And actually, it's pretty easy to find, but we missed it like at least four times. So they pointed it out to me and then you wonder, like, how the heck could I miss this? Inside, you are dressed up like an, a patient in a hospital. They don't serve healthy food so i asked them for a diet coke and i almost got spanked oh yeah by the way you do got spanked you do get spanked in this restaurant trust me i've actually seen them break uh, a wooden spanker do they call it a spanker i don't know probably that's a really bad word sorry guys so shooting in a restaurant like this is just funny as heck and do you see by the way the uh, the drip that's when you order alcohol they actually give you that in a drip now the drip is normally in your glass and you drink it now, the most funny part is about this restaurant, and I don't know if you can see it in the images. You see The Last Supper in the back. You see all the movie posters. All the movie posters are changed to everything that has to do with unhealthy food. Now, the restaurant itself tells you that it's a protest against unhealthy food. So, in other words, they show you how bad America has gotten with unhealthy food and that even it's tripled through through all the media and that when you eat unhealthy food, you should actually first see a doctor. That's why when you come in, you have to go through a doctor's office. Then you get on the gown from the patient. Then you go into the restaurant. Only the weird thing is then you have to finish your plate because if there's only a spank on there, you will get spanked and it's all unhealthy stuff. So it's a little bit of a weird experience for us as Europeans. On the other hand, it's funny as heck. And I really had a blast over there. So really, really cool to shoot. And of course, do it a little bit like a tourist and people don't even notice it. Yes, Annelieke? I don't know. Okay, so he, oh, it's actually over 350 LBS. So, okay. Um, and week says that the sound is getting worse. I don't know how that's possible, but okay, we're almost there. Okay, bad conditions. Now, a lot of people will go like, hey, bad conditions, uh, it's raining, I don't want to shoot in the rain. Go out and shoot in bad conditions, guys. It doesn't matter because it's so much fun and you get unique pictures like this lighthouse. Somebody showed me the lighthouse. And, ah, I'm so very sorry, it's a bad condition. I said, dude, normally with this lighthouse, it's all blue skies that you see. We have a unique picture here. We have actually where the lighthouse is designed for. Vogue, right? So yeah, overall, bad conditions, not really. Maybe bad times. Now, if you want to shoot snow, one of the tips I get, or I can give you is actually use a long lens and compress. As you can see here, it looks like there's a lot of snow. There wasn't really. There were only a few uh, flocks of snow. But by using a 240 mil lens and just compressing everything to 240 mil, you are pushing everything together. So the glue, ex or, sorry, the, the snow actually glues together and it looks like there's way much more snow than there is actually in reality. And let's be honest, shooting through the window, of course, because I don't want to get wet. But it's, it's just insane how many cool images you can get. Reflections. Everything is different when it's raining. Everything is different in colors, in reflections. This is Amsterdam, of course, the red light district. The lights. Everything just gets a totally different feel at night. And especially with rain. I just love shooting that. 
Let's see here. So bad conditions? No. Rain is there to make stuff reflect. It's just awesome. And of course, on the street, people are so busy with their umbrellas and everything that they don't even notice you. So if you are scared on shooting on the street, shooting people, bad conditions can actually be a perfect way to shoot people for the very simple reason. It's a bad condition. So people are not focused on you shooting. I just love those images. This one, I will feel sad for the rest of my life because this one is out of focus. And this one I absolutely love in color, but it's so out of focus that in color it looks terrible. So we made it black and white. And at least it's a story, you know, and this is one of the things that's also important. It's more the story than the perfect. So of course I want an image to be text sharp, but if it isn't and it tells the story perfectly, yeah, why not? Uh, Paul asked me, have you ever used, uh, have you used some vintage film presets on some of the images? I almost do on all my images. Uh, it sounds weird, but I think that images should be colored and tinted for mood and uh, atmosphere. Now, normally when you shoot film, you actually choose the film role for the look that that role will give you. In digital photography, we don't have that luxury. We have, uh, oh, sorry, we do have that luxury, but we don't have the limitation of choosing the role before we start shooting. So what I do is I will shoot my images, I will get them into the computer, of course I will make sure that everything is perfect, and at that point I will start looking at, okay, so what do I want to perceive for my viewer? Do I want my viewer to be a little bit more blue, or do I want to express warmth? And then I will find the filter that works best. Now in all honesty, when I visit New York, I often have, uh, if you have my preset pack for Lightroom, you actually know this. There are some presets called, for example, New York 2019. That means that when I'm in New York, I have a certain mood that day. For example, when we visit the flea market, I have a certain mood. I create a preset for that whole day. And sometimes that preset works really, really well, and I store it in my preset pack. Sometimes the preset is just for that day. But I do try to get all the images about the same look, the same feel. And I do that with tinting, without any doubt, but mostly with my own preset pack. And you can get them on uh, uh, frankdorov.com slash presets. You can get the preset packs. They're, I believe, 10 euros. This I love, reflections. It's not a composite. It's really real. We shot it through the window. One, I love the image of the hole with the, with the uh, legs, but also that the guy is so focused on the book. It's, it's just, for me, it's very interesting. Somehow reflections, combinations, yeah. Windows always work. Theme parks. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of theme parks, but this was um, NASA. Um, okay, uh, I don't know, in Florida, the, the big one. Uh, and we maybe knows the name. I'm drawing a blank at the moment, although I was really looking forward to this one. So this one, I really wanted to visit because I love space. I love everything that has to do with the universe. And seeing those rockets up close is just amazing. But how do you shoot it? There are always people around. So I opted in this case for super wide angles, 12 to 24, and shooting on a very, very low angle. And then going crazy with my looks in Lightroom. So I just try to do something differently. Not just shoot the theme park, but literally create a different atmosphere and mood. So although it's just a theme park, I try to do something different with it to make it more interesting. Also for people that look at it, because for me, seeing a rocket is already like, wow, I really like this. But seeing it like this in a totally different way with wide angles that people already are not used to. And then also under weird angles, people go like, wow, this is different. So just try it. And of course, Universal, same thing. We went to Universal, and this is the part that I don't really like, because I don't like rides. So Universal for me is more like, okay, I will go there, I will love all the colors, and I will love all the people that walk there, but I'm not really somebody who goes into rides. So I try to find some stuff that's more interesting, like, for example, this on Main Street. I just like that motion, but I'm a big, big, huge fan of old horror movies, like... Universal Monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Creature from the Lagoon, the Mummy, the Invisible Man, Hammer House of Horror, I love them all, Twilight Zone, it's, the list goes on and on. So when we went to the Monsters restaurant, I didn't even care for the freaking food, I just went around with my camera and took some shots. And the cool thing is, 
even in a restaurant, you can do so much funny stuff by just focusing in on stuff, using the colors that are available there, the lighting. They already set it up for you. The only thing you have to do is find the angle and shoot it, right? So why not take advantage of it? And at one point I became bored and I was thinking like, there should be more than this, right? Let's incorporate a little bit of storytelling. And this is one of the things that a lot of people fall for. They see something beautiful, you take the picture, and then later you come home, you look at your pictures and you go like, where the heck is that picture that was so beautiful? And then you realize that that ugly, boring image is actually the image where you were looking for. And that's the problem because we are on location and at that point, the only thing we see is that beauty and we capture it. But we forget to look through the camera. We forget to find an angle that makes it more interesting because what we see with our eyes is way more than the camera captures. In this case, I like the close-ups of all the monsters. But at one point I was going like, let's tell a story. And there was this part with um, the mother of Saigo, of course, within the background, the creator. We all know, right? So I was just going like, wow. Let's place him behind him with his hand like this. And the only thing I had to do is move around and wait until there was nobody in the window, by the way, because there was a lot of reflection in the window. So at one point, I just asked somebody to stand in front of the window and just make himself a little bit wider. So he blocked all the reflections off and I took the shot. And there we go. Now we have something that's more storytelling. Sorry if it's a gruesome picture. And of course, you can shoot it like an exposition like this, but... You know, this misses the power for me. This is more like a touristy shot, like, wow. But if you compare it to the other ones, this is more like, wow, this could be on the cover of, for example, a horror movie or a still from a horror movie. Well, the last one, yeah, it's, it's more like an exposition, right? So there's a difference there. Storytelling, composition, and of course, comics. Find something that you absolutely love and try to make a reportage of it. For me, it's comics, action figures, horror. And so every time we visit, for example, America or any other country, I try to find a comic book store. I'm a huge fan of EC Comics and Batman. So mostly the shorter stories, the horror stories, the science fiction stories for EC Comics, of course. We try to find comic book stores. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that comic book stores are small universes, small universes existing in their own galaxy. And that's cool because you can photograph that. And because I'm a slight part of that community, of course, we don't have comic book stores like that in the Netherlands, so I'm not used to coming into a comic book store and talking about um, Doc Ock's newest invention and if Spider-Man in level 5 and comic edition that will defeat whatever. So I can't talk those stories, but I still know that there are a lot of people that do that stuff. Think about the Big Ben, the comic book store, right? And that's a normal comic book store. We try to visit the smaller stores. And the first thing I always ask is, do you mind if we take pictures inside? Now, in a lot of cases, they will tell you, we love it. In some cases, they tell you, we don't want any pictures in there. And you know what happens when somebody tells me, we don't want any pictures in there? I walk away. I don't buy anything. I don't even care if it's a big $1 bin where there's, okay, if there's easy comics for $1, I will probably get them. But I will move away for the very simple reason. Every guy doesn't have passion for what he does. Why don't you want a photographer to shoot your store? Because all the images will end up online. And that will bring in new revenue. So it's the dumbest thing you can do to tell a photographer, don't post any images. We have a lot of followers. A lot of my followers love comics. So why not make those images, right? And it can give you some really cool stuff. One, point, one day, a friend of mine in New York told me like, hey, there's this huge warehouse. It's not really allowed for public going but you should try it. It's amazing. So we literally went to this warehouse and from the outside, the only thing that could be recognized was this little sign comics. We went in and it actually looked like this. And I was just going like, this is awesome. So the owner came up to us and said, hey, you're not allowed in here unless you have an appointment. Do you have an appointment? And I was just going like, sorry, dude, I don't have an appointment, but, but come all the way from the Netherlands. I love comics. Could we please look around? And he just looked at us and he was just going like, you know what? Have fun. Look around. Look. So I asked him, can I take some pictures? Yeah, sure. Now look at this. This for comic book fans is Valhalla. This is where you want to go. All the junk. And don't 
misunderstand this. This aisle, this junk, is probably more than you and I earn for the rest of our lives. There are little toys in there that retail for over a thousand dollars. There are comics in there that retail for over four or five thousand euros. It's insane. And they have like a gazillion there. Okay, so we are allowed to shoot there. And again, for us, these are cool images. I'm just going to show you that it's a different world, right? So try to something that for you is normal and you go like, hey, that's really dirty for other people can be cool. Okay. Another place where I love to shoot is flea markets. Without any doubt, flea markets are a collection of cool stuff, but it's also a collection of cool people. People that you don't see every day because, well, they are a little bit out there sometimes on flea markets. And of course, sometimes there's also some fun to find. For example, if you have to ask what this is, get out. Yep. If you don't know what it is, I'm not going to tell you. I just love this guy. He was so proud just standing there. And at first I didn't really notice this, but he noticed my camera and he was just pointing towards the camera and just going like this. I was going like, okay, if you ask for it, I will shoot you. And he just waved and that was it. So sometimes that happens. And I don't know, I didn't find that guy really interesting, but I just wanted to put it in the seminar to show you guys that sometimes people literally just point towards your camera and go like, shoot me. Okay. And sometimes they just walk by a little bit drunk and you just shoot it. <laughs> Why not? Right? You know, if, if you, let me put it this way. If you put up a yellow umbrella, you take a little bit too much drink and you walk by me and you go like, you're going to get a photo, right? And you end up in a seminar. Again, I love comics, so there are some images there from comics. I just want to show you what I look for on comic, uh, uh, sorry, on flea market, on colors interesting people but most of all interesting angles how can i tell a story that's also interesting for somebody that doesn't visit flea markets or that never been to a flea market what can you find on a flea market is it just the people is it just the little stands or is it also the colors and the collection well i try to show all and but most of all colors like here the red with the yellow i just absolutely love colors they just jump out at that point it wasn't normal that people wear masks so that also caught my attention again colors and the the haggling do you see the microscope there the the, the chains he's looking at it and that incredible umbrella it, it's yeah it just draws my eye immediately old radios love tube radios and look at that guy just going like okay i don't care what anybody thinks of me i'm just sitting here i'm melting away my life for just some bucks I just love that look. And trust me, there was something that I wanted from him. <laughs> I don't know if it was this guy. But I just asked. He was sitting there similar. I was just asking him, like, hey, can you give me that? And he was going like, take it yourself. And I was going like, ah, forget about it. It's... I always tell people, do stuff with passion and it will translate back. People will hire you because you do something, because you love it. You do it with passion. This guy... Yeah, no, there's not something that goes out like, yeah, I really love to be on this flea market, man. I love it. I want to be here. I want to sell you stuff. This goes me like, yeah, sure. So, yeah, it doesn't really translate well, right? But I love it for a shot. Haggling, always. I give you five. No, I want ten. I give you seven and a half. No, I want ten. I give you eight and a half. No, I want ten. I give you nine. I want twelve. Okay, I will do for eight. Okay, pay me seven fifty and it's done. Flea market stuff. So I really like it. Same here, colors. And again, they are there the whole day. And sometimes people are really creative in how they set up their space. Sometimes they're outside in the sun. Sometimes they're inside in a car. This guy had his whole setup in the car. So it was like, this is just fun. And of course, we all lost B.A. Barreca somehow with the A-team. I found him. Now, there's always somebody that tells you that you can't take a shot, right? Now, most of the time, when I point my camera towards somebody, they know I will take the picture of them. Sometimes I will do it sneaky, but most of the time, everybody that I shoot is or aware of it after the fact or before the fact. And most of the time before the fact, because I don't like to just throw a camera in, into somebody's face and just take an image. I don't think that's nice. Don't do that. However, if as a photographer, I have my camera next to me, so I don't have it in my hand, 
I walk straight past to the car and I have this guy in the truck with the flowers. He was talking to somebody and I didn't find it interesting to shoot, to be totally honest. I didn't. Maybe the flowers and the combination, but it wasn't something that really jumps out to me. And I was almost at the truck, as you can see here, and he started shouting at me like, M, F, U, this, that, and gay, day, and I don't want to say it full out, but it was a lot of curse words. Hey, we're in New York, right? Every word, every sentence has the F-bomb in there. But he had a lot of more F-bombs and a lot of more curse words that I do know, but I never heard in one sentence, and especially not thrown at me. The reason why he was so angry, I still don't know, but I think it was the camera that put him off. At that point, I was just going like, okay, guy, I don't even point the camera towards you. But if you're already pointing at me and shouting, now you can have it. So I pointed the camera. He pointed at me like, don't you dare. And I just took the shot. And I was going like, I care. This is the part. And at the end of the seminar, I really want to stress this. This also happened in Amsterdam uh, with a friend of mine. We were walking. And there's this huge uh, stand with cheeses. And... As a Dutch person, we're used to those stands, and they're awesome, right? We love cheese, at least I love cheese. <laughs> and those stands are awesome. They're really nicely packed. They're, they, they look nice. They look real Dutch. And there were these big signs, don't take pictures. And cameras with stripes through it. And don't you dare take a picture. They were like on this little stand of maybe three meters wide. There were at least five or six signs with don't take pictures. Now, this guy was really rough. So I looked at him, and I was just going like, I, I didn't take out my camera. I just let my camera stand behind me. And I just looked at him and I said, dude, really? With all those signs, you know what's triggering me now to take a shot. Not from your cheeses or from you, but from all the signs in three meters, six signs, don't take any images. And he said, don't you dare. I said, dude, I don't even want to. But... You do have to realize that for some people who are maybe a little bit more into professation, of proper, I don't know how to, but, but trying to pick a fight, this can be a little bit like a red thing on a steer, right? On a red thing on a bull, sorry. And he just looked at me, and at that point, somehow he just melted his defense away. And he said, you know what, Frank? I told him my, my name was Frank. He said, you know what, Frank? And again, right, make a connection with your subject. I told him my name. At that point, we are more than just somebody that walked by because he knows my name. He said, Frank, you know, a few years ago, there was this lady. She was in her 80s. She always came down to get some cheese from the old folks' home. And she got a heart attack right in front of my booth. And people started taking pictures. He said, from that point on, I said, my area is a non-picture area because... We need to help people and don't make pictures of people that are laying on the floor. I talked to him and said, dude, that's the most disgusting thing I ever heard. As a professional photographer, that really turns my stomach. Because you would never take pictures of people that are in despair or that are in health issues. Or that you don't do that, right? You help out. You call 911 or 112 in the Netherlands. So you don't do that. And he just looked at me and said, finally somebody with a right mind. I said, do you realize that 99.9% .9 of the photographers have the same mind that I have? That only the 0.1% that you encountered are the bad ones? I said, but in essence, by posting all those signs, you are taking away the fun for me to take photos of something that's touristy. You're taking away the promotion of your own company, because a lot of people like this. And you're taking away a lot of the fun just the fun of yourself being photographed. It's so much fun if you just let people do it the right way. He was just going to me. He said, do you know that my cheese is won prizes? I said, no, I didn't. Do you want the cheese? Sure, I love cheese. So he gave me this big part of cheese. He gave my friend a big piece of cheese. And he just said, you know what? You can take pictures. And at that point, I said, I don't want to take pictures. And he just looked at me and said, why not? He said, because you don't feel comfortable with me taking pictures, so I won't do it. But just think about it. I hope that with this conversation, I at least triggered your mind into all photographers are bad to at least one photographer isn't bad. And maybe more photographers. And maybe in two years, when I pass this stand again, you will have only one sign up. Do not photo. And maybe in five years, you won't have any signs up. 
He just looked at me and said, probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, that can happen. But at least he now knows that there's also a photographer that doesn't take pictures of bad situations. So always talk with your uh, subjects, connect, and just have that stuff ready. Okay. I would like to thank you so very much for watching, guys. Sorry that we started a little bit later. We had a lot of issues with our audio. I hope that now the audio is a lot better and we said that it sounded a lot better, but there was still some crackling at the end. We're gonna take a look at that. At least we are halfway there for the solution. So let's hope that with the next Digital Classroom, we solved everything. Leave comments below how you think the audio was and of course, how you liked the seminar. If you have any questions, feel free, one of course, to leave them below second of all you can always email me your questions the next digital classroom we don't know about it yet we don't know what we're going to do but we know it's going to be fun we'd like to thank BenQ and rogue of course for sponsoring digital classroom we would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel leave comments below and smash that like button but most of all tell other people about our channel so we can grow thank you so very much for watching guys and see you again next time